1 Thessalonians 1 5 in your Bibles. Just some interesting stuff here. You get a chance to take a look at in the Greek language as well as the English. And yeah, there's some interesting stuff here in the Greek, that's for sure. Paul is just a master of the Greek language in, in writing. And um, I just, I'm just uh, overwhelmed every time I study it, uh, whatever Paul writes. I'm just, I just know I'm in for a long day of study, uh, just trying to understand the dynamics of what he's saying. Here is verse 5, because we've read verses 1 through 4 and studied them. Uh, Saul and Silas and Timothy's salutation uh, to the little church at Thessalonica. He says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power, in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sakes. That's a powerful idea. A powerful idea. Now, what I want you to go to your paper. Everybody got a paper? All right, I want you to go to your paper. I want you to do something because I want to show you something that's really important. Now, you can see it in English, so I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> Notice up there, I'm, I'm, before I start point one, because we're going to do four points based on this, verse 5. I want you to circle the word in, I-N. I want you to circle it. That's going to be important. Circle the word in. He says, for our gospel, and I gave you the Greek understanding, definite article, toe, and, and you know, the word good news or gospel. For our gospel did not come to you in... The word only, but also in power, there's another in, power, and in the Holy Spirit, and in full conviction. Those are prepositional phrases, right? There are four prepositional phrases. Now, the dynamics of this is really important. He used the word en but he put it in the instrumental case in the Greek language. And there's a reason that he did that, because there is no definite article with the word logos, word. There is no definite article with the word power, dunamis, just like there isn't in your English. And there's no definite article with Holy Spirit, no definite article. That's not there in the Greek language. Then he comes to in full conviction, there's no definite article. Without the definite article on these, the emphasis is on the function, their function, and not necessarily their theology or, or what they are as a word, but rather their function the dynamics of their function. And their prepositional phrases. And they're working off the, the verb, come. They're working off the verb. For our gospel did not come to you. And then he gives four prepositional phrases. These four are working off that verb. Do you understand that? <laughs> Their prepositional phrases working off the subject and the verb. Go on, people. Our gospel subject did not come, negative, did not come. Notice that's ook, ginomai. That's ginomai. Did not come to you. And then he gives you four, four prepositional phrases. Gospel is the subject. A negative who did not come in word only, but also
That's really important. That's, uh, that, what I'm just telling you is really important. Now, get on my, I guess I'm probably going to cover that. I'm going to cover that in point one. Get on, my, get on my is really important. So let's go to point one. That you got your prep. Here's the, here's the subject, the gospel. There's a definite article. Right? right. See the word to, T-O? That's a definite article. The gospel. The subject is the, is the, the idea here. It's the subject is the idea. The prepositional phrase is going to flow from it. The gospel has not come in word only, but also. They, see, they were struggling. They were having a problem with that. They were having a problem. They, 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 they had the idea that the gospel came by the word of God, but they, they didn't under, they were having, they were struggling with the, the next, which is the power of the Holy Spirit and full conviction. Okay. I'm just trying to show you what Paul is setting up for you. Really important for you to get, really important for you to really get a hold of this now. now. So I'm going to take the I'm going to take the four prepositions dealing with their function in connection to the gospel of grace salvation. That's what Paul's talking about. The gospel is what brings grace salvation. So he uses four prep and I'm going to deal with the instrumental mood is because their functions is in the instrumental in plus the instrumental of means by means of. That's the way they should be translated. That's, that's when you can leave your first grammar book that says in is majority time is used with a locative or whatever. You have to go to Dante for, the, <laughs> for an advanced understanding of this. I'm just telling you for those who have a Greek. For our gospel did not come to you. Now, point number one. Note that the fourfold workings of the gospel of grace salvation is given by four prepositional phrases in the word, in the power, in the Holy Spirit, and full conviction. When he's dealing with the part with, and the gospel did not come in word only. The word not is ook, that's a strong negative. And the word come is not a normal word for come. It's genomai. Genomai, if it was come, it would be erkomai. E-R-C-H-O-M-A-I. Let me give you an example of erkomai. It is not erkomai, but let me give you an example of it. Because it's talking about coming in a literal sense. 1 Timothy 1.15, Christ came into the world to save sinners. Christ came into the world to save sinners. The word is erkoamai. means he, he literally came into the world to save sinners. Where did he come from? Well, he came from God in heaven. That's where he went back to in what's called ascension session. Erkoamai. This is not erkomai. It looks like it because it's translated come when it should be translated become. Genomai is normally translated become. Become. It is used in this way. See, uh, I know you don't know that, but I'm just telling you. If that was norm, a normal come, it would be erkomai. But it's not. Paul changed the word. The English didn't, but Paul did. He changed it to become. And it means a change of condition. When the gospel is preached as the word of God, it's designed to bring a change of condition. In the life of a person. In the Greek language, it's the main verb off which the four prepositions work. 
It's an aorist passive indicative, third person singular. The aorist tense is a point in time, divorce from time, referring to salvation. The moment you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead on the third day, the moment you believe that, aorist tense, the Word of God is going to begin to do its work to change your life towards God. He's going to bring you into the family, and he's going to be your father forever, just for an example. The passive voice is the voice of grace. You are saved by grace through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. It's the voice of grace. It's an aorist, point in time of salvation. It's passive, emphasizing the grace of God that saved you. Not, it was a gift, it, not by works, but it's a gift, not wages, gift. You know, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Indicative mood is the reality in your life. The reality is that the moment you believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead, the grace of God saves you right then and there, and you're saved forever. Because God saves you, and you don't save yourself. All right? And once you're saved, you're saved because it's a gift. I don't suppose this is co politically correct, but God's not an Indian giver. They'll probably take us off the internet. <laughs> like I could care. I did all right without it. I do better with it, though, however. Ercomai, though, Ercomai is used in 1 Timothy 1, 15, so you can see the difference, okay? This is not come in the typical sense of come. This is life-changing experience of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, how do you know you're saved? Hey, you know you're saved. Because it's a life-changing experience. <laughs> Romans 5.5. 5. Here's one. Romans 5.5. 5. Here's a life-changing experience. The moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is poured out in the love of God is poured out into your heart by the Holy Spirit. Point of salvation. That's a life changer. Now what he wants you to is, is to grow up into that love where you can carry that love to other people, right? Then you go like, wow, I can't just believe I shared it with that guy. I wanted to punch his lights out. But instead, I let the Holy Spirit, I put the flesh under the power of the Holy Spirit, and he just led him to Christ. You ever had that experience? Young believers do. They have that. I had it. Get on my, get on my. For our gospel did, did not come in word only. It came in word only, but not word only. I got more to tell you. Isn't that wonderful? Listen, it would be just enough today to tell you what I just told you and go home. Because we get people saved off of what I just told you. We could have an altar call to have people saved. But Paul said, but I got more to tell you. So I've, so I've got a few more minutes with you. But not only, but not only by word only, but also. And that takes us to the four prepositional phrases that are used here without definite articles, placing the emphasis on their function. Now that you've been saved by the word of God to change your life towards God, let me tell you what just has transpired in your life. See, that's the point that... Paul is making with this. He said, I got more to tell you. I want to talk about the, the power that changed you. I want to talk about how that, that power changed you, right? I want to talk about the Holy Spirit that's now in you. And I want to talk about the full conviction that you should have from it. So that's what we're going to talk about. Point number two. 
It is interesting that Paul used the logos for the word rather than rima. For me, that's interesting. If he'd have used rima, then the emphasis would have been on the gospel, that he died, emphasis on his death. How, what his death did in order for you to be saved by it. What, his burial, what it meant for you to be saved, his resurrection, what it meant. To, if it had been rima, I would have had gone through that. But he didn't. He used logos without a definite article. He used logos. And this is what's important to us when he says, for the working of the word for the gospel. We know logos was a new covenant word established by the apostle John in the book of John, gospel of John, and 1 John. When you open the book of St. John up, the gospel of John, he launches out in that Jesus Christ is the logos of God. Listen to what he says in verse 14 of John 1, 14. The word became, guess what that word is? Genomai. <laughs> that word in John 1, 14 is genomai. It's our word used up here. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's what Paul's talking about. Paul used this word without a definite article in our text. I'm talking about today's text. To show the function of the word of the gospel, which was the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Well, why did, why, did, why did the only begotten Son of God become flesh and dwell among men? 1 Timothy 1.15, right? Came to save sinners. It's what the cross is all about. 1 Corinthians 15.3 and 4, Jesus Christ died for, our, for the sins of the world. He was buried on the third day and raised from the dead to give life everlasting. Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles, because this is really important to the word full conviction. <clears throat> because you're going to be amazed when you get there, because it's probably not what you think. But I'm giving you a heads up to prepare you for what I'm going to tell you when I get to full conviction. Are you in 1 John 5? Over by Revelation. 1 John 5, 11, 12, and 13. Well, let me, go to, let, me, let me just go to 10. The one who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. Hey, if you want to know more about that, you got to read John 14, 15, and 16 where he talks about it. The one who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. The one who does not believe God has, has made him a liar because he has not believed in the witness that God has borne concerning his Son. Now the witness is this that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Got that? Stay where you are and let me move. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. How do I get in Christ? I believe the gospel, and the Holy Spirit baptizes me into Christ. Galatians 3, 27. The moment I believe, I receive. <laughs> ah, you having fun? Boy, I am. Oh, back to 1 John 5. Look at verse 13. Now, if, remember, if you have the Son, you have eternal life. How do I get the Son? The moment I believe the gospel, I am placed in the Son. If I'm in the Son, I have what? If I'm in Jesus, I have what? Eternal life. I'm going to hold you after class. 
Now I sound like a teacher, don't I? Except most teachers today don't want to hold anybody after class. I'll tell you this. Uh, what a mess. Well, anyhow. These things, now watch this. These things, the things he's just spoken, I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God in order that you may know with absolute confidence, no oida, that you may know that you have eternal life. How do I know I have eternal life? Because the B-I-B-L-E is the book for me. It tells me so. It was written, right? <laughs> I know. Somebody's got to have fun. Let it be me. Point number three. The second working of the gospel of grace salvation used by Paul without a definite article was the word power. It's the word dunamis. It's where you get the English word dynamite. It refers to an explosive power working in the realm of the inner man called the new creation. You know why we're a new creation in Christ? Because of the inner working of the power of God at salvation. It is the power of God that changes your, your life. Get on my. That puts you in a get on my capacity. I quote it all the time, Romans 1.16. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who, come on, congregation, believes. believes. Not who works, who believes. Because it's a gift. The gospel is the power of God to change your life. It's the power, it's the dynamite, it's the explosive power of God to bring you out of an old creation into a new creation, to bring you out of Adam into Christ, to bring you out of death and into life. Bring you out of 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin into the new man in Christ. The power is not in your hands. The power was in God's hands through the gospel. When you believe the gospel, God's hands got involved in your life. John 10, 28 through 30. The explosive power. It's also recorded in 1 Corinthians 1, 18 on your paper. For the word, definite article, holagos, of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, John 3, 16. But to us who are being saved, which is a progress throughout time and eternity, it is power of God. <laughs> The word of the cross, we call it the gospel. The word of the cross, when you believe it, sets loose dynamite, <laughs> breaks up the old man, and reestablishes the new man in Christ. Isn't that powerful? My, my, my. You ought to be so thankful for the grace of God to change your life. He took you out of Adam and put you into Christ. Now it's up to you to develop that relationship with God through Christ where you can go from a baby in Christ to an immature in Christ to a mature in Christ to a super gracer where your life is now in a relationship with God where he calls you his friend, not just his child, a friend. What a wonderful day that is in the life of a parent when he is actually having a relationship with his adult children and, and you're, you're good friends. I say this all the time. There's nobody I would rather go anywhere with in my life than with my own children. I have fun with them. It's fun to be adults with adults and not just with children. They are my child, but they're my best friends. I have the most wonderful time with them. I can't imagine not 
having that relationship. But let me tell you, it's because of Christ. When you become a friend with God, you become a friend with a whole lot of people that are mature in Christ. And they're fun to be with, aren't they? You love to be around them. There's just a joy to listen to. They're just a joy to be with. Well, I don't know. I speak for myself, I guess. Point number four. The third word of the gospel of grace salvation used by Paul was the Holy Spirit without a definite article. With the emphasis, the moment a person believes that Jesus died for his sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day, called the gospel. He receives eight works of the Holy Spirit and grace salvation, which can, never be, which can never be lost, which he can never lose in time and eternity. I wrote them on your paper like adoption. I gave you a Bible verse, baptism of the Holy Spirit, indwelling of the Holy Spirit, regeneration by the Holy Spirit, sanctification by the Holy Spirit, sealing, uh, spiritual gifts and spiritual life. The one Paul would be emphasizing would be all of them. The one I would be looking for is the indwelling. I, I was saved several years with a mystery about the work of the Holy Spirit in my life because nobody taught me anything about the Holy Spirit. The churches I were involved with were afraid of the ministry of the Holy Spirit because there, there were so many problems connected with it because they didn't know the truth, I guess. I don't know. They would never teach it. And uh, I spent three years in really good evangelical churches that never taught me anything on the Holy Spirit. And I was wanting to know. I went to theology school. And four years later, learn nothing about the Holy Spirit. My senior year of theology, I sat down at lunch with two guys. Rick Hughes and Gary Horton at Shoney's. They changed my world. They taught me about the Holy Spirit. I had no clue. I wanted to know. I bought books and never could put two and two together. They sent me down from salvation, walked me through it. We spent about two hours in Shoney's. I never drank so much coffee in my whole life. And I walked away. Then they went out to the car and got me a book of RB theme on spirituality. Handed it to me and said, if you want to know more, read that book. Don't call us. Call him. <laughs> the back of the book will tell you how to get in a hold of him. Well, you don't ever get a hold of him. What you got a hold of is more books, <laughs> which I was happy about. So for me, the great emphasis here is for you to understand the moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit took up residence inside your body, and your body became the temple of God. You're a mobile church. You don't go to church. You are church. When you go to church, it's just for the different temples to assemble. <laughs> that makes a difference. Think about that. I just read that. That's for, I just quoted that. That's at 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? 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 That's what these guys laid on me. They said to the Shonies, what? You don't know that your body's been... Are you saved, Ronnie? I said, yeah, I'm saved. Hey, don't, don't mess with me now. I know I'm saved. Well, how come you don't know that the moment you got saved, the Holy Spirit took up residence inside you? That's why you have a hunger to know about him. I went, well, talk to me. So they did. The indwelling... When I discovered that, I went, wow, what else did I get? Now I was really interested in what else. What else? Said, well, you know, it was a gift. Well, you got a bunch of gifts. And I went, whoa. 
They were all under the tree, didn't have my name on it, so I didn't look at them. <laughs> Once I realized all the, all the gifts under the tree, Ron, have your name on them. I got like a happy kid. I look for the big boxes first, right? Hoping that it might be a motorcycle or something. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 and 13. Now you have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. When did I get that? Salvation. So that, this is why he's there, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. I talk about 50 things you receive. There's many more than that. I stopped at 50. I thought if I could get my people just to grab 50, I'd be pretty happy. I was up to like 75 or 80, some of you that go to this church. I was, I went, I don't think there's any end to how much God has blessed. And so I, I came back to 50 and put them in, uh, you know, that little pamphlet, 50 things, you ought to get it. If you're on a website, just go get it. It's free. Just don't charge anybody for it. It's free to you, it's free to them. Let me talk about the four. Oh, oh, I was going to go on. Freely given to you by God, which things, freely given, we also speak not in, not in words taught by human wisdom, mm -mm, taught by the Holy Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Boy, when you start doing that, you will grow like crazy. We've been really excited with one of my grandsons because he's gotten really tall and he got tall really quick. Like by the time he hit the fourth grade, he was like, he was taller than grandma and grandma went like, whoa. By the fifth grade, he was taller than me and most people in the house. He just keeps on growing. And I went, to, went yesterday and watched him play basketball and I thought, thank you, God, we finally have somebody tall enough to play basketball. The rest of us all had to play football. We weren't tall enough to play basketball. I said, thank you, God. And he used every bit of his height to play wonderful basketball. I was so proud of him. I know you all have stories to tell, but I got the pulpit. <laughs> so I have to brag a little bit. The fourth work of the gospel of grace salvation used by Paul. Now, this is really important. Full conviction. Because this is not what he's talking about. In John 16, 8, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, of righteousness. He's not talking about that. It's a completely different Greek word. The word that's used over there is spelled E-L-E-N, E-L-E-N-C-H-O. Look at your paper. The word full is polos, much. And then you got a compound word. You got, you got phleo-o. And, uh, and, then, and then you have phoria. Oh, yeah. And it refers to something carried to its fullest or to its entirety so that you have confidence and assurance in it. It's a wonderful word. Now watch. What was, the last, what was the last prepositional phrase we had before this one? This is the fourth. What was the third one? Ho Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This is a work of the Holy Spirit to the believer's life, not to the unbeliever's life. You see, John 16, 8 is for the unbeliever. When he comes into the world, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. This is not that word. This is not that action. This is the action of the ministry of the Holy Spirit entering your life. And what purpose is he? Is to bring full conviction or confidence or assurance of your salvation in the gospel of Jesus Christ and nothing else. It is Jesus alone that died on the cross. It is Jesus alone that was buried. It is Jesus alone that was raised. It is Jesus alone that brings your, your, your grace salvation by faith in it. 
and your full conviction, the Holy Spirit will bring full conviction to you or confidence or assurance based on the word logos of your salvation. Not no one steal it from you. Old John Haggai, when he led me to Christ, he gave me John 10, gave me a Bible, and gave me John 10, 28 through 30. I kept the Bible. I just wore it out. Right? I mean, if you still got your original Bible, you must not be using it. Because I go through them about, about every two or three years, I go through them, and, and they don't matter how expensive I buy. I wear them out. Now, I know I, I probably do a little more than the average guy with it, but, you know, kind of like a mechanic with his tools, he wears them out more than mine, <laughs> right? I got the same tools in my toolbox. I, I, I don't change the oil, Right? change the world. I'm just saying you, you ought to be studying your Bible probably a little more than you are. I, I'm just assuming something I shouldn't assume. But I'm going to show you what it does for you. Because I mean a lot of people that don't have confidence of their salvation, they doubt it. They're, they're fearful with it. They, they just, they, and, but listen, they have in their possession the ability to have full Conviction of their salvation. It's going to come for the word of God and the Holy Spirit teaching it to you and saying to you, ding, ding, when he gives you a passage. Like, like I knew, I knew when I left that, I went home, the only verse I had that I could look up was John. I mean, I read that John 10, 28, 29 and everything around it. I, I folded my paper, didn't want to lose it. I didn't know how to use the Bible. I never had a Bible before. I wrote all over that thing. I didn't know you shouldn't do that. I don't care if you do it or not. You know, I'm not one of those guys. You buy, but don't do it if you don't want to buy another Bible, unless you get special ink. And then you got to have special paper that goes with that ink. It gets kind of complicated. All right? John, that John 10, 28 was my verse. I live by it, and I, and I had full conviction about it. People would go to me, Ron, you get back into sin, you're going to have to go back to the, go back to your, go, go back and get saved again. I went, uh-uh. Well, and, and I didn't know any better. I'd say, explain to me John 10, 28 through 30, and they couldn't. I'd go like, well, I'm hanging to what I got. <laughs> you're all over the place. I ain't going with you. I'm going with the guy that led me to Christ and gave me this verse and said, no, let anybody take it from me, and I didn't. And I held that one verse until God gave me more. <laughs> now I got so many, I forget to my original. But Thomas had that trouble, right? In the 20th chapter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you, you know the story of doubting Thomas. Once you, one time and it gets tagged, right? Well, I don't know if it was one time, huh? It's only the one time we heard. It came out so easy of his mouth, I think it might have been a pattern. What do you think? I don't know. I'm just saying. It seemed to come out pretty easy. Well, I'm not going to believe unless I see. I'm like, ooh. Look at all the witnesses around you. I don't care. And so I think maybe it might be deeper than a one-time experience, but he got tagged. Maybe he was tagged earlier. I don't know. But, boy, he's been tagged in history, hasn't he? Doubting Thomas. Everybody knows. Doubting Thomas. I hope we won't find him. I'm, when you get to heaven, don't go look for it. I want to meet Doubting Thomas. Uh, he may not have that title. Listen to this. He says, Jesus said to Doubting Thomas, boy, you get this. Because you have seen, well, as I see and touch his scores and I see that, that he's been crucified, I won't believe, right? <laughs> Because you have seen, you have believed, question mark. Well, let me ask you, Thomas. Unless I see. Well, what? There. Da 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 da
nail scarred hands. What do you see, Thomas? Scar, just scar, rib, that, that. See, he posed that as a question. He says, because you've seen, have you believed? You going to go on with this foolishness in your life? Watch what he says now. Blessed. He doesn't say Thomas. He says, you want to step out of the misery you're in and get into the blessed group? See, you're in the doubting group. How about getting into the blessed group? Get out of the doubting group. You, yeah, you can find more people like you. That's called the doubting church. Get in the blessed church. Blessed are those who did not see yet believed. You haven't seen Jesus personally where you could touch his scale, his nail-scarred hands, or put your fingers where the spear was thrust in his side. But you've believed. And because you've believed without seeing, you've believed by faith. You're blessed. You're in the category of blessed and never, never, never leave that group to the doubting and the fearful. That's a miserable group to hang out with. Full conviction is the word. No more lingering doubts or fears. Now you are trusting the word of God and everything it says about your grace salvation. Saved by grace, not by works. It's a gift. Not of yourself. You must believe what the Bible says about God's security of your great salvation. It's God's security, not yours. God's security. The power of the gospel gave you salvation. It's in his hands. Stay in his hands. Even if you get out of them, which you can't. Right? What be you? Well, you know, if I get out of them, you can't get out of them once you're in them. Yeah? Thank you. She said, thank God. <laughs> that the truth. We'd have climbed out many times, but we can't. The testimony is this we read earlier, that God has given us eternal life. Eternal life is in his son. He who has the son has eternal life. He who does not have the son of God does not have eternal life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know with certainty or absolute assurance that you have eternal life. Nobody should walk out of this church today without being blessed by what you've heard and read. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 1.5, we are really moving at light speed, so try to keep up with us. Let's have a word of prayer and be dismissed. I want to thank Ed Jones. Where's your faith? <laughs> thank you, Ed. What a wonderful song. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these that have come our way by the automobile and the internet. We pray they've been attentive, attentive to this study. They will need to study it several times to get it. We expect that, and they should expect nothing less. I pray, Father, that you would encourage our hearts as citizens of America but more so as citizens of heaven. We are pilgrims. Not from Plymouth Rock, but from Golgotha's cross. We are pilgrims. It doesn't matter where we are in the world, we are pilgrims traveling through this time to eternity with full assurance that to be absent from the body would be present with the Lord. And we thank you for that victory in Jesus. In his name we've prayed. Amen.